Cody and I are covered in bites. We've Most commonly asked questions we've gotten about this fence is how are we gonna keep the dogs from pushing the panels out? Second most asked question is what are we gonna do with the big gaps under the fence right here? Hopefully Cody will let me start working on the floors. That was always the deal, is once the walls and ceiling got done, we could do floors. So I'm holding you to that, sir. Okay. Baby, don't you understand that we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand. I was never the one to write up a song for just anyone I, I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations oh cause I've always been told that things will unfold if you keep on waiting but then you came along and proved me all wrong I was so mistaken cause you glue all the pieces back together yeah you you take all my wrongs and make them better yeah you you're making me want to try forever And I feel so free Oh my sweet baby I was never the one to give up the ghost No, I was so stuck I kept on playing my part Wanted to give up cause nothing was changing but with you it's so clear And now that you're here I see colors in every spectrum Guess I finally learned my lesson Cause you glue all the pieces back together Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever And I feel so free Oh, my sweet baby And I'm thinking out loud We won't need nothing else For the rest of our time And I know it so well I will always be by your side Cause you glue all the pieces back together Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better Yeah, you, you're making me want Try forever, and I feel so free. Oh, my sweet baby. Cause you glue all the pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better. Yeah, you, you're making me want to try forever. So free, I'm oh, a sweet baby.
Hello friends! It has been quite a bit since we have gotten in front of the camera and actually talked. It feels a little weird. Yeah, we've been really busy between wedding stuff and then working on tedious parts of the fence, which is just repetitive filming over and over. So We filmed so much of what we were doing with the fence and how we did it so many different times that we just decided we wanted to just knock it out and time lapse it. So we're going to show you what we've done, answer a couple commonly asked questions regarding the fence, and then probably work inside because Cody and I are covered in bites. We went on a bike ride. Uh, we went to the conservation area that's mm -hmm. pretty close to where we live and it had not been groomed in quite a bit. <laughs> yeah it was pretty bad. The grass was about as tall as the bikes were so. But before we even realized we were already so far deep into it we were not going to turn around so we were like all right might as well power through and then shower when we get home. So we're covered in bites, mosquito bites, tick bites, probably some spider bites in there. So we're not really wanting to work outside in the heat and sweat because that's just really uncomfortable. So I think we're gonna probably work inside a little bit today. Yeah. But let's show you what all we've done. So I think where we left y'all last time, we were somewhere over here at the back side of the fence. I think one of these panels. So since then we have completed three, four, five, six, seven, probably about seven more panels. So we did two more that way and then five more that way. And we ended up running out of posts. So we decided to go ahead and do all the stapling for the panels and then also all of the wood on top. So pretty much the entire fence is completed up to this point. And so we just have to finish this corner over here. And then once that's done, we have to go do the three gates and that's about it. So one of the most commonly asked questions we've gotten about this fence is how are we gonna keep the dogs from pushing the panels out? Well, what we've done is added some fencing staples to each corner, and they're about an inch and a quarter long. They're pretty heavy duty, and after adding those in, we really cannot push the panels out at all. And then our second most asked question is, what are we going to do with the big gaps under the fence right here? Um, since this is pretty much just downhill the entire way, we had to stagger the fence to be able to go with the slope of the ground. So. That leaves us with it touching the ground on one side and then a big gap on the other. We have two options for what we're going to do right now. One is either we're going to take our leftover cattle panel and make some kind of like triangular shaped pieces to go on the bottom and then bury it underground a little bit. Or our second option is we're going to take the tractor down to the creek and see if we can find some really nice sized boulders to be able to kind of line the fence because it would look a lot better and then we don't have to do all that cattle panel work. And I think we're gonna complete that probably after the gates are on. It'll be like the last final finishing touch step before we let the dogs loose. And the reason for that is because we're most likely gonna to have to use the backhoe on the tractor to be able to pick up mm -hmm. the large rocks. And to do that, we have to switch it out with the post hole digger and switching the implements back and forth is kind of a big pain. If we can avoid switching them back and forth, it'll make it a little easier on us. Okay, to summarize that a little bit, all that's left in the backyard is the three gates, these last two panels, and then filling in the couple gaps that we have with boulders or cattle panel. So that's our list, but it's a list for a different day because we need to mill a little bit of wood, we need to get some more concrete, and I'm very uncomfortable, so I wanna go inside in the AC. <laughs> oh, and then Cody just reminded me that we have to stay in the fence as well, so. Yep, and each post we have to cut off the top and either add something to make it look nice or- Yeah, but that's like more Router like it or something detailed. like that. Finishing touches, yeah, but. Yeah, pretty work. We just need it functional. Yeah. Function is key around here. Hey friends, I'm very excited to bring you today's sponsor, In Case. When it comes to your health, time is of the essence, and that's where In Case steps in. Whether you're exploring the great outdoors or navigating through foreign land, or even just preparing for the unexpected at home, in case is your safety net and always ready for action. Living in a small town means we can't always get into the doctor right away. And life can be quite unpredictable here on the homestead. So having emergency medicine on hand has really helped our peace of mind. Inside each in case kit are six life-saving antibiotics that are prescribed by doctors. These antibiotics cover a wide range of infections from respiratory to skin, from gastrointestinal to urinary tract. Plus your kit includes an online doctor's consultation, a handy usage guide, and a sleek carrying case. Natural disasters like hurricanes, earthquakes, and wildfires can strike anywhere and at any time, blocking access to medical care for days. And even when you do reach a hospital, medication shortages can put your health at risk. But with in case, you're always prepared no matter where you are. And all of this peace of mind is available for just $159. 
Don't wait for an emergency to strike and get your in-case kit today because your health is worth it. Make sure you check the link in our description to find out all the information that you need to know and use the code on the screen for $5 off your kit. Or you can even visit their website directly by going to getincase.com. Thank you so much, InCase, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get Instead, back to it. I think we're gonna be working inside the house and doing this ceiling. Once the ceiling's done, we'll have all of the walls and everything that needs to be drywall mudded and painted done in here. And then hopefully Cody will let me start working on the floors. That was always, that was always the deal, is once the walls and ceiling got done, we could do floors. So I'm holding you to that, sir. Okay. In the last video of summer, finished up all the wet sanding on the ceiling, so now we're gonna finish our second coat of mud, and then hopefully we can paint. sucks about YouTube sometimes is we can't play our own music so we really be having like all-out jam sessions and dance parties but y'all don't ever get to see it because we can't play that kind of music so oh well to see all the low spots whenever you have the lights right in your face so I'm just using the spotlight to kind of help me see where all the low spots are. on one half of the house and now we're gonna start working on floors on the second half. We've laid everything but it's not really attached to the actual ground so that is what we're about to start working on. But I did want to talk about this super chaotic corner behind me. We're about to move all this out of the way to start working on the floors but the reason we haven't really done anything with this corner yet is because I still want to install a hot water line that goes from the water heater to where our stove pipe is and we can't really install that until we start working on the bathroom so Unfortunately, it's just gonna have to stay like this for now, but we are still gonna move everything out of the way so we can mark out this flooring right here. A lot of this is just our kitchen cabinets and then a bunch of tools that we currently need in the house that don't belong in the tool cart. As we start finishing more projects in the kitchen and the living room, all of this get moved and then it'll just be the fireplace and the TV. But for now, it's been a great storage area. So in shipping container houses, on part of your floor, your original shipping container floor, you're gonna have metal at the end of it. It's basically kind of just an inset for where a forklift used to be able to pick it up at. So because it's metal, we have to use a subfloor glue to be able to attach our plywood underlayment because we can't actually nail into it or anything like that. So we're gonna be using this PL400, I think it is, uh, construction adhesive subfloor glue, and we're gonna be completely covering the sheet of metal, putting the plywood down, and then nailing the plywood into the actual wood that we have on each side over here. And then once we get that done, we're gonna put a bunch of weight on top so that way we can get it stuck to the metal really nice. The reason we're doing this is so we have a nice subfloor to be able to put our tile flooring on top of. As well as in the middle of our container floor right here, we have this metal beam where the floor or where the containers meet together and it's raised up off the floor a little bit. So using this plywood underlayment gives us just enough thickness to make the floor completely level with that. So that way when we tile over, it'll be completely flat and we won't have to worry about that bump.
bottle is that? Number three. Don't you understand that we only get one life? Away.